Welcome to On the Rec Yard, women's prison podcast, where we are live on the Rec Yard every Wednesday night. Hey, hey, everybody, and the baby is leaving the room. It is <laughs> Wednesday night at 7 p.m., and we are live on the Rec Yard Women's Prison Podcast. I'm Marcy Marie. I'm Tunchi. Welcome. We see everybody in the chat. Department of Corruptions, we missed you, Department of Corruption Stories. Let me say the whole name and not disrespect you, sir, by cutting it short. Uh, we, we missed you last week. We understand you have other obligations sometimes, but we're so happy to see you tonight. And we are talking about some of the weird things that we do out here in the free world because of our incarceration. And I'm really excited because I could name off about 105 weird things that Tunchi does. What? And I can't, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so I'm, I'm anxious to see if she uh, is going to admit to them all. And then we had um, some of our listeners and our family here. And I see Denise Cherry, good evening. She is one of the folks that sent us a voice memo. We have a handful of voice memos and a few videos to play for you guys of some of the things that um, other folks do because they've been to prison. So welcome into the show again. Thank you. Thank you. Make sure you're hitting that like button and the hearts and commenting all of that good stuff. I see my mama in the house. Hey, mom. And Hey, and, and the people that are in our front are, girl, Jennifer, get it together. I've been at this desk all day from back-to-back -back meetings. So if I'm a little frazzled uh -uh. today, it's been a lot. We are not giving grace. You okay, no grace given, show, no grace 100%. <laughs> <laughs> so in the private uh, Facebook group, um, we've got, I see Peaches, uh, Chanel is here, and Nora and Tammy. So thank you, guys. There's the peach coming in hot. Um, Thank you, Peaches, and uh, all of our family and friends here. It should be a fun show. It should. There'll probably be some moments where we get emotional, as we usually do, but it should be should be pretty pretty interesting, right? Yeah, I think it's going to be a good one too. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, you guys always come in and support us so well, and we appreciate you all. So let's see if I can get myself together. <laughs> Let's do a weekly recap. Toonch, we have a lot to talk about. We've had a busy week. We had a busy week, a huge weekend. Um, let's just start there. You go first. Yeah, so we um, are working on our research project with Texas A&M. So we got to meet with some fabulous ladies, a few of them that I had never met, which is always fun. And a few that I did a lot of time with that I hadn't seen since we've been home. Uh, and so that was even more fun. Uh, we, we did a focus group and had breakfast and visited. And uh, that was wonderful. And then that evening in Austin, that one night in Austin, <laughs> where they, they let all the dangerous women out, we had our dangerous women in our villain era, Lioness, Justice Impacted Women's Alliance event. And it was, it was an event. It was a party for sure. If y'all haven't seen the pictures on our social media, you need to, after the show, go look at them. Phenomenal um, shots that the photographer got, but a lot of candid moments and uh, what a great time. It was, it was off the chain. It was by far the most fun I've had since I've been out of prison. It, um, it was empowering. We had stations set up about ways that society tries to devalue our population as women, as girls, as gender expansive individuals, and ways that we can take that back. We had, gosh, Starling um, Thomas had her journal that she wrote. She's a formerly incarcerated Linus member, but also leaders in other powerful organizations. And she uh, 
ha- gave away journals to formerly incarcerated women. Man, the the folks from UT, the students, researchers from UT were there talking about books that get banned in women's prisons. And, and there was dancing. DJ Jessica. Yeah. God, it was such a great time. And and uh, Jennifer uh, O oh is, is saying that she, me too, I had the best time. It, it really was. I, I often say, you know, the only place I feel like I'm myself and I feel my authentic self and I feel like I'm surrounded by people who accept me for who I am is y'all. And it was a party. It was a party. It was, it was to connect to the community and it, it was to share our message and, and take hold of our narrative. But it first and foremost was a night to celebrate us. And we did. Y'all did an amazing performance. We will have sometime at the end of the year, probably, we will have our documentary um, that we did around the event um, and with several members. And so y'all will hopefully be able to, to really see the performance. It was so impactful. It was so incredible. And all I have heard all week long is just tremendous feedback about, you know, what we do um, at Lioness and, and how impactful and different and exciting um, that it that it is to the community. And I just, I love y'all. I I just, I just can't even say that enough. Like I've just looked at those pictures probably hundreds of times now and just thought, I just, what joy and happiness I felt in that space with y'all. We just, we were just us, you know, and it was great. And I love seeing um, people that were at the event have been making their own social media posts and um, everything from, um, TikTok videos with slides and, um, gosh, one of our members, uh, posted, uh, gosh, what did, what did Angela post? She posted the most impactful thing on, um, one of the social media platforms, just talking about how it gave her strength to reclaim some of her own narrative and just, I mean, I I just think it was amazing. All the little TikTok videos that are coming out of it. Uh, Chanel posted something that had a picture. One of our, we were supposed to come as our favorite villain or a female villain. And one of our members, Cherry, Denise Cherry, came as a police officer as the villain. And she had cuffs. Well, there. so naturally, people got their pictures taken with handcuffs. So Chanel did a video, and it was her getting handcuffed by Denise. And, and, she, and the caption said, I'm not going to SEG. Because, guys, they cuff you in prison. In fact, I just now recorded a video talking about getting handcuffed inside of prison. Uh, and, she, and then the next picture was you, Tunchi, getting handcuffed. And then the caption said, I mean, I'm not going alone. <laughs> right. Girl, I'm coming down there for you. I'm coming to get you. That's what we used to say. Like, will your girlfriend or your best friend go down to say, girl, here I come. I'm coming to get you. Yeah. Or if it was, if it was, especially Chanel, you know, I did time with her. She, if it was somebody going to SEG, and it might not even be somebody that's her best friend, but if she sees them getting done wrong and it's blatantly wrong, She's going to speak up and she has ended up in handcuffs because of that. Yep. Standing up for each other. And, but that's how we did in there. Anyways. Yes, it was great. It was really, really good. It's a lot of fun. And that DJ Jessica was just so great in the music and Pam's ways kitchen. She provided such great food. Um, we had a raffle with, with really cool, but I mean, it was just so well done. All of our little stations, um, we had the burn book that people could uh, write down their frustrations in. Um, it just was, it was just incredible. And so I think everybody that was a part of it, um, who shared it, who's, who's liked the pictures, who came to the event, um, we just appreciate and love y'all so much. Very much. So you guys have to make sure and follow Linus on the social media um, accounts and you guys can look at more pictures, more videos coming out. And I got some of the performance. I'm trying to piece it together. Um, And so we'll try to get that to y'all too. And I just realized, oh, I have been putting these on the screen. Maybe I'm a little loopy today too. 
Honey, have you had some cough syrup? <laughs> no, but I have been in front of this computer all, all day. Yeah. I, and one of my meetings went way over uh, and my voice has already done so much. So <laughs> I'm going to have to do the majority of the talking tonight, y'all. I, I'm, thank you, Bruce. I support the decarceration of all women and girls. Thank you, Bruce, watching from LinkedIn. We appreciate you so much. Uh, yeah, and I'm not going to leave y'all to Tunchi too much, but we are talking God. about some of the, even if I just have to whisper, I, I'll save you from her. I promise I won't leave you guys alone with Tunchi to talk and talk and talk. You're a, you're a mean little lady. <laughs> So we're talking about some of the things that we do, habits, good and bad, that we do because we were incarcerated. I was have 10 years in the system. Tunchi has 20 plus years in the system. And um, there are definitely some habits that are hard to break. I put out on our on the rec yard social media um, uh, on our Facebook act page, actually, a call for people to send in videos and audio. And I just did it last night. And our crew is so incredible that I have a, I probably have 15, man, they came with it. Uh, and I, we appreciate that. So I'm going to be, um, I'm going to be playing those throughout as we talk about some of our, um, <laughs> did you meet Diane Zamora? She is another notable inmate who made news in the late nineties. Of course, we, yes. we know we, we, we know, know Diane. <laughs> we know Diane pretty well. Yes, we do. Hey, you're yes, sitting on somewhere, baby. You're making Diane. Good to see you. Thank you for hopping in. And Bruce is asking, how can he support our efforts in a meaningful way? And for sure, you want to. Um, you can go to our website, which I'm going to put on the bottom of the screen right here. And there are ways to support us there. And obviously we appreciate you guys uh, liking our social media posts, sharing our social media posts and talking about our stories, facts and stories that you hear right here on the podcast and through, uh, through our other social media outlets. Those are actual accounts of things that happen in women's prisons that people don't realize go down. So when you start talking about that and sharing that, that starts to share the or change the narrative also. So Tunch, let's talk about let's talk about you and some oh, of the boy. some of the things that go yeah some of the things that you do because of your incarceration. Well, I mean. Marcy, you've been to my house, you and Jesse and, and, and all of our, most of our friends have been to my house and uh, you can see that it's very orderly <laughs> and very particular. I'm very particular about where things go um, and don't wear your shoes in my house, right? Like do not do that. If you do that, I'm going to stop what we're doing and I'm going to clean the floor. <laughs> I'm going to, it, so when we were locked up, we didn't allow people because Marcy Dare I say, and if Chanel is here watching, Peaches is watching, Donise, everybody will 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 agree you were a you were a bully about that floor, about that cell floor. <laughs> because somebody walking in your cell with shoes or your your cubicle with shoes on wasn't just nasty to us, right? Because the whole facility is disgusting. You only have that little bitty space that's yours, so you keep it as clean as you can. It was also culturally inside there a sign of disrespect, was it not? Oh, it definitely was. And that goes all the way back to the county jail for me. We had um, we had a dorm with four different cells, kind of cells, four different spaces outside of that dorm that held, I don't know, I think I was in one that held six and one held four or something. I don't know. But anyways... That floor in there, that was my job when new people came in or if somebody was coming to visit was to grab them like, uh, -uh don't don't do that. And if you were going to charge somebody up and you wanted to fight, uh, that was a good way to get it started is stomping on up in her in her living quarters with her with your shoes on. And do you know, did y'all do this? Did y'all have we talked about dashing people's bedding in their and their floors with the black cup of coffee. Boy, 
the more I know you, the more <laughs> I find out. You, you didn't do that? You've never, you didn't know about that? You mean dashing with, with, with a, a hot cup of coffee, just pouring coffee all over their shit? Yeah. I mean, yeah, you would do it smooth. You would have to, you'd make the coffee and you would put several scoops of instant coffee in the water so that it was real dark and thick. And you, you had to walk down with it held low because the cameras couldn't see. And then you'd walk by and just th toss it in and just keep walking like nothing. You wouldn't even slow down <laughs> because you wouldn't want the camera to catch what had happened. Um, so and, now that's who poured this coffee on my couch. No, get off the gas. You get did off the that gas. the last time. You see, Marcy still does that now. She get mad at you. She going to dump coffee in your car or on your couch. That's what I'm that not, came from. I'm not saying I'm above it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was that. And that's that's was because that's how important it was to keep our area clean. That that was the way that you. Yeah. And, and the person would know it was you, but they couldn't prove it. You know, you can't get in trouble if they didn't see it. It didn't, nobody happen. saw it. It didn't happen. If the laws didn't see it and the camera didn't see it. I'm trying to think of something that I've seen you do. That is a prison habit, right? Like it's pretty obvious with me, the way that I live very minimal. I'm very particular about my don't, I, I wipe the sink out every time I use it. That's another thing that we would do. You'd always have to wipe the sink out. Don't leave globs of anything in my bathroom sink. Like that was a big deal. Clean sinks and clean floors. If you'd get slapped. Um, it, I've seen women full knockout fights over hair in the sink. It just was a thing, right? Not only was it gross, but it was, it, it's a level of disrespect. It means something different in there. And it's really a hard habit to break after 20 years. But I'm trying to think of something I've seen you do. I feel like I'm just so well adjusted. <laughs> what? <laughs> you almost fell out of this chair. I feel like there's not very many ways. Uh, now let's talk about this, ma'am. Now let's not talk about like habit habits like Oh, you know, the way you dress or the way you set your apartment up or your furniture. Let's talk about like what other habits we're talking about. We're talking about emotional habits, too. Oh, are we, oh, I'm, let's talk about that being well adjusted now. <laughs> what kind of emotional habits do you think I have? From well, prison. I think we all do. I think all of us, it, us and our friends, it, it, um, the habit of, um, Cutting somebody off. Cutting just... somebody off, baby. You piss me off. I see one red flag. I see, and I think we talked about that this weekend. It is a, it, that is a habit that you develop in prison. And maybe it kind of capitalizes on some of your mental health conditions. But it is the first, I'm so hypervigilant all the time. The first sign I see of something I can't trust, I'm going to cut you off all the way off. Yeah, no, I agree. And, and with, and thinking that that is a valid response to something immediately and I don't know it is second chance month so maybe we need to rethink some of those instant psh, you know I mean there's one thing to cut the people off that continue to harm you but someone making one mistake maybe doesn't valid <laughs> validate this extreme way that we do that. Um, my mom is in the chat. She says that Marcy cooks in the dark often. Uh, often I don't turn the lights on. I mean, yeah. almost to the point where somebody will come walk through the kitchen and turn the lights on. And when they leave, I'll, I'll sometimes turn them back off. I don't want them. I don't want them on. That's true. Mom, mm -hmm. that's true. She does do that. Now, I do recognize that when I've we've been somewhere, whether we're traveling or I'm at you and Brittany's home. This girl won't turn the lights on ever, like especially in the kitchen. She's making coffee and food and breakfast and all this stuff. It's in the dark. Yeah, I even put my makeup on in the dark when I give my you know, we have my nephew. So the kindergartner, when he takes a bath, he'll say, why are all the lights off? Because we have like a night light and that's what I shower. I'll turn that night light on and he'll like, can we turn the lights on? And I'm like, you can't see. He said, not really. And I'm like, yeah. 
Okay, let's turn them on, kid. Uh, well, yeah. and for people who are wondering, well, what is the big deal about the lights? When, when you are at a facility that, first of all, the lights are a way to torture us. I, I remember at Mountain View, we had a warden that was making them keep on the, the uh, day room lights, Marcy, even though the, the, I mean, she was having them keep all the lights on except the very few that she could get away with. And I don't know, uh, to people who haven't done time before, that thing of, uh, you know, that we need nocturnal to sleep, darkness, having the lights on all the time will make you feel like you're losing your mind. I, I don't know how to describe it. It, it. it makes you feel like you're going mad. Um, I've been in a cell before, Marcy, where I was there for days under observation that they never turned the fluorescent light off. And I remember feeling like I'm fixing to lose my mind. So number one, that. Number two, if you can turn the lights off when it's hot, it will bring the temperature down just a little bit. And so we would beg them. I know y'all at Murray probably did too. Begging them to turn the lights off to try to control the heat somewhat. Yeah, absolutely. We did that. And Lee just brought that up that summer's coming uh, and they're worried about the heat for the incarcerated population in Texas. And that's a very real concern and valid thing to worry about because 70 percent of Texas prisons do not have climate control. We know that temperatures inside of those prison cells can reach temperatures anywhere from 110 degrees to 149 degrees. They're quite literally deadly temperatures. And uh, you're right about the light, because when I was in the ice house in crisis management at the Patrick O'Donnell unit, mm -hmm. or the Mountain View unit, um, they, that's how those lights are on right, right in your face, in your business. The first couple nights, you don't get them off at night. You have to earn that privilege by not trying to harm yourself for a couple of days. And then you get the lights off like from 10.30 to 5 or whatever it is in the morning. But I remember that first time they turned them off after it had been on that I was just like, oh, thank you. Thank goodness for that. Um, and, and you're right, Lee. People, people absolutely are, are going to not survive this summer in Texas prisons. We uh, lost a lot of people last summer and every summer before then. Yeah. So I'm trying to think of some other stuff um, that I do as well. And I'm going to say it's my eating habits. <laughs> I send a picture to Marcy and them sometimes. I'm like, well, this is dinner and it's literally a noodle, some Doritos and a Dr. Pepper. <laughs> And hey, I'm going to tell you something else, Marcy. When I buy those ramen noodles, okay, let's say I buy the little pack and I take the wrapper off, you know, because the pack will come with a wrapper. And I've got a handful of noodles, like five or six of them. The joy I feel inside, like when I'm putting them on the shelf, I feel, I don't know, like I have money, like I have, um, like I'm, I don't know how to explain it. Like would we feel when we come back to the store and we'd stock our little box full of noodles and chips and junk, really. Alexa and I used to say we're living off of gas station food. But the pure joy that I feel when I put those noodles in the cabinet, I just noticed that the other day. I was like, why am I feeling like this over a handful of noodles? And that's why. It It is a sign that you're going to be okay, that you're not going to starve, that... Uh, the whole slew of things uh, having commissary and you do eat commissary food for certain. It's really peculiar. <laughs> you don't have any groceries ever. You have gas station food. Alexa's right. That's gas station food. I want to play one of the first videos. This was my friend on the Dr. Lane Murray unit. And I have uh, just the same way that there are so many stories behind me and what people could tell you about the craziness, uh, the way that I acted in prison sometimes. when you, you know, when someone's completely oppressed, 
and feel like they are at the bottom and have nothing to lose, they act in ways they would never act otherwise. Uh, and I have seen this this girl do some things, and she's the sweetest thing. I'm going to say her Facebook name and um, not more because I didn't ask for permission for more. So B. Lynn, the question was, um, finish this sentence. I've been to prison, so I still do this, basically. Okay. I've been to prison, so of course I put on my makeup in my gender box. That okay. is... And yes, I bought this from prison. That's a gender box. You saw that? That's a real gender box. That is a box that they sell in Texas women's prisons after they got stopped selling those big whatever metal toolbox looking ones that was a gender box so y'all a gender box is just a, a toolbox we used to they used to be metal craftsman toolboxes you could beat the brakes off somebody with those things um but then they ch changed to those plastic they're tackle boxes um, and so we call them in Texas, they call them gender boxes because supposedly women get more property than men uh, because we had a curling iron and a, a hair dryer, right? Um, but well, here's the thing. We weren't allowed to put anything in it except that curling iron, that blow dryer and some makeup. Tampons. And tampons are our six tampons. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. It could only be like it was so regulated it could only be those items that were sold on a women's unit and not on a men's unit. Uh, yeah. I can't believe she still has that and she still keeps her makeup in it. Did you see it? I did. It was, <laughs> I really can't. My dad has my first gender box that I used it as a suitcase to come home the first time I got out of prison. He still has it. Katie Kennedy, K Katie Kennedy says buying a couple of the 18 packs of toilet tissue each time going shopping, even before COVID happened. And that's you do hoard tissue because you never know in there when there's not going to be any. Look, uh, now, I'm just going to address this about the tissue now before you bust me out, before Mandy or Lori or anybody else busts me out now. OK. And the truth of the matter is, once I used that big jumbo 48 roll pack that Jesse got me last year, I did. I went right back to the one ply toilet paper. Marcy, I did. Tunchy, you deserve to ply. Listen, the toilet paper they give us in prison is the thinnest, crispiest, <laughs> non-soft you know, and it's, you can't wait. It's so non tissue that if you go to the chapel or somewhere else and get like a Kleenex from like the chaplain ladies, you're like, oh, this is so soft. It's the most soft thing you've ever felt in your life because the prison toilet paper, like Department of Corruption Stories says, it sucks. That is what Tunchi buys in her home. That is what she serves her guests in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> she, I don't know who was it recently. I don't know if, if it was Mandy or who it was, was like, I hate you in this toilet paper because it just, it's so, it just dissolves. There's, you just have to use half of the roll and it's like, no. It's offensive. Don't. It's you offensive. Just, I'm not going to spend that amount of money on toilet paper when at the end of the day, I can use that tissue. It worked to, It worked for 20 years. I make it work. You don't have to live your life like that anymore. Don't. Susie Bannon said it's like gift wrapping tissue. It doesn't <laughs> even absorb. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Judy says it's kind of like goes with your gas station food. So it does, uh, Judy. I, I live very uh, frugal and very... Um, weirdly minimal and very, I don't know, you know, I had somebody one time tell me, you know, I don't know how you eat like that and you're not gaining weight and you're not like you eat a lot of carbohydrates, you eat a lot of junk. 
my 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 blood tests are perfect. My cholesterol is perfect. And I think it's because 20 years, my body just learned to metabolize carbohydrates like protein. Seriously, you, you do eat just like you were in prison. Uh, and no, you're exactly right. I want to, while we have Jennifer Mack sent us a voice memo. Uh, okay, let's see if I'm Let's see. I'm just going to try to hold my phone up to the mic. And we're just going to try it that way. Here, because we're it, back to this. like we No, listen. <laughs> they came in Messenger and I didn't really know how to get it off of Messenger. It doesn't let me save it to my phone. Oh, because oh. you have an iPhone. My Android would have done it. You Shut should have just sent it to day. me. You could have just gotten on here and looked, but you haven't even looked at the On the Rec Yard uh, chat. And so I didn't on. know. I didn't Thank know there you. was one. Yes, you did. If you didn't know, you didn't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Jennifer Mack answering. I, I've been to prison and I still do. I've been to prison, so of course I know how to make hair gel out of state soap. Hair gel out of state soap. Marcy, tell people what that state soap, you've, you, you've told them before, but tell them what that state soap is made out of. It's made out of lie. It's made in prisons by people incarcerated in prison. And it's it's this little bar of soap right here. For those Look of you that. that aren't watching, it's a lime-ish green colored bar of soap that's about the thickness of two quarters stacked on top of each other and uh, only a little bit bigger than a quarter fact I've done a video where I held a quarter up to it but I don't have one with me for those of you watching to see you could soak this just to, just put about 10 drops of water on it and let it absorb that water it would expand just a little and you could you could style your hair if you wanted to do those little ringlets that that down the side of your cheek you could do that and it would stick right to your <laughs> uh, people with short hair like you, Toonch, could spike it up to the side. Um, you could, if you had a ponytail and you want it to look real slick, you would slick it back. But if it rained, you had bubbles in the top of your hair. <laughs> People would run. My hair, my hair. Susie Bannon said I gave myself chemical peels with that soap. Seriously, this is not. This is a force to be reckoned with. <laughs> this little soap. Coincidentally, I have Brittany's prison hanky in that drawer too. This was her handkerchief in prison that she bought off commissary. Anyways, yeah. You can use the soap to help shape your eyebrows too. So yeah, it was it was seriously. Christy's here watching from Kentucky. Welcome in, Christy. Glad to see you. <laughs> okay, I want to look and see. I have another one. I want to play Peaches. Let's see if I can do it quick because uh She's wearing a Linus shirt in hers and looks adorable. There she is. So uh, we asked Peaches, who is one of the Central Texas Regional Directors for Linus Justice Impacted Women's Alliance. We asked her, you've been to prison and you still do. I've been to prison. So, of course, now I get in the shower with shower shoes when I'm somewhere I don't live. And I take all my hygiene in a towel. <laughs> Girl, she's got the towel roll. She has the towel roll. No, the towel roll is what took it over the top. Um, <laughs> I I also will get into uh, a shower with my shower shoe, with my flip flops on. Um, I just barely stopped doing that in my own my own space. I did that in my own space for a long time, but not the towel roll with the. With the shampoo and the stuff wrapped up in it, um, that is a very unique incarcerated thing. Do you know that 
I don't have hardly any understanding for folks that can't grab their stuff up for a shower, like, and, and just go get it. That's, I can live with, in fact, all of my, <laughs> she's on there. She said, yes, with the shower. Well, yes, with the towel roll. But I, I can have all of my stuff that I need is this much for my shower. Isn't that crazy? Because I've seen your makeup stuff. Like, so you carry an ass load of makeup stuff, but when it comes to the shower, yes, you've got your little. I need to look good. I smelling good's not that. (laughs) (laughs) No. Well, you know, Brittany worked at Ulta. So I I got a lot of makeup free when she worked there. And so we're still living, living large on that. Uh, on that Ulta hall. I see. I see. So, yeah. <laughs> you do just grab it and go. Um, I think, yeah, I do that too. And I'm thinking it re- it's reminding me, making me think of traveling. I, I was working with someone to book some, some travel in the summer. And um, I don't know, she asked me, do we need to do an extra charge for like, you know, luggage? And I said, oh, no, I have a carry-on always. I don't care if I'm gone a week. And you'll see this when we uh, are in Washington. I will literally have that white backpack for an entire week and just wash those clothes because I'm not carrying. Everybody knows. The prison freaked me out and did something to me that I need to be able to get up and go at any point because they can move me at any point. And and if I can't carry my property, they're going to tell me to throw it away and I don't want to be stressed out so I live in a bag and I do that when I travel, you know, I've come to your house and I'm like, I got a toothbrush in my deodorant. And I'm like, well, I just figured you had shampoo. (laughs) (laughs) Just counting on me. (laughs) No, no, I don't have any shampoo. I have extra mascara. (laughs) No. uh, Hi, Jerry. Welcome in. Thanks. Thanks so much. Since we're talking about shower shoes after, I think that this is that theme. Niala Thomas was my daughter inside of prison. And that has, that was one of my habits that carried over to the free world. She's still my daughter now. And so we asked her what she still does because she's in prison and I'll let her tell it with her own voice. I've been to prison. So of course now I wear shower shoes in the shower. (laughs) She wears her shower shoes too. She has a little cold and Niall, I hope you're feeling better. Her and I got sick at the same time and I I hope that she's feeling better than me. <laughs> Edith, hi. Welcome to the show. Uh so glad so glad that you're here live. We appreciate you so much. Hey, uh, and that's and- another good theme, Marcy. Is what it, is there anything that you do when you get sick that you did in there? I know when I get sick, I immediately eat a ramen chicken noodle soup. And then I make a little, my own little concoction of chili soup packet and hot sauce and salt and shake it up and guzzle it and have a V8. And that was my go-to medication and maybe a non-aspirin if I had one. Is there anything weird y'all do when you, when you get sick? Well, the chicken ramen for certain. I mean, I, and why do we think that's helpful? I don't know, <laughs> but we do. And and even if it's only helpful in your mind, well, your mind's a computer and it tells your body what to do. So it's it's whatever. Um, but we do we still do hot toddies around here, which I want to tell you, I didn't know was an alcoholic drink like in the free world. <laughs> I had only knew a hot toddy to be in prison. I learned that term in prison. So to me, what a hot toddy is is a very hot tea with a melted cough drop down in the bottom, uh, crushed up, melted, not the whole mint stick, but a good portion of the mint stick melted in it. So you have this vapory, minty drink, and then you can crush a CTM, which I think that's a prison term, but CTM was like a daytime allergy pill that you could get on commissary. So you would crush that up and you might crush up a non-aspirin and you put the medicine, you dissolved it all in the tea and you drank that hot tea. And if someone else was sick, that was a really big term of endearment 
is to make them a hot toddy. You want me to make you a hot toddy? <laughs> and I'm like, mm -mm, I don't want that. I need my V8. I need my V8 with my um, chili powder in it. <laughs> yes, yeah, jalapenos. Some people would put jalapeno juice in that hot toddy or uh, chili powder too to open everything up. They tell me, oh, drink this. It'll open everything up. I'm scared to drink that jalapeno juice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be sick and sick, sick in the bathroom too at the same time. That doesn't sound great to me. <laughs> God, because that was the worst. You know what? You know what else I do now that I'm thinking about it? Um, when me and Alexa lived in Sea Dorm at Mountain View, a lot of times, Marcy, I have anxiety in the middle of the night in my sleep, like panic attacks. And so, you know, I would tell her about it. She was like, from now on, wake me up. I was like, I don't want to do that. She's like, wake me up. It's fine. And so I would wake her up and I would go to the bathroom stall. Now, people probably thought we were doing something else or, you know, but it, this is all that it was. And I would need her to bring me a hot washcloth. And so that hot washcloth I would put on the back of my neck to calm down. And then I would go lay down and I would put it underneath my shirt on my chest. And so anytime I feel anxious now, I'm like, <laughs> there's Melissa back there on the bed. I'm like, Melissa, I don't feel good. I need, I need, a, I need a hot washcloth. <laughs> and so the bed will just be full of like these cold. Now they're cold, right? Because they've cooled off. Um, but I, that was something that I had as comfort whenever I would have panic attacks or didn't feel good. Well, yeah. who said that, that they still make their bed? Jennifer O. Oh. Yeah, me too. Yeah, we, st we, we do too. Although Brittany working nights and me, me working days, our bed's really funny to be made because it's just made for such a short time. Someone's always in it, it seems like. So um, my friend, Sheila Marie Hinojosa, I did time with her on the Dr. Lane Murray unit. Um, she used to call me Marcy Darcy. She swore that she knew me from a previous time that I had been incarcerated, but that was my first time incarcerated. And we almost came to blows over that fact. <laughs> <laughs> I had never been locked up anymore, but she insisted. And I was just telling her all we, I, I just must look like someone else. I'm telling you, but anyway, she's doing wonderful in the free world now. And she answered our question. So this is what Sheila responded to. I've been to prison, so naturally I still. I've been to prison. Of course, I still try to leave my shoes at my door of my bedroom. Not wearing the shoes inside. It's a big one. It's it a is big a big one. one. And then having them, we would take our shoes off, bang them together, <laughs> like to give whatever kind of debris or dust might be in the bottom of them and then place them on a floor towel. That's correct. <laughs> so that they would never touch your cell floor. Yes. And if, if you, if we, sometimes we had staff that was real petty about those little towels. So then you just lean them up against the wall. You put them on the tips and you lean the heels up against the yes. wall. And I catch myself doing that by my door. So I'm like, why the hell am I doing this? Yeah, you're right. You're right. That's exactly, uh, that's exactly what I have gotten into it with a few roommates about wearing shoes in the cell and one, I, if, if this, whoever that cute little redheaded young roommate that I had for a short time, because you filed an OPI on me, <laughs> <laughs> if I just want to tell you, I'm sorry, because truly, truly, she was going through a mental health issues and I was not giving her any grace. We did not give each other a whole lot of grace for if you were going through mental health issues in there that you could be, you could have mental outbursts, you could go crazy and scream and that was forgivable. But if your mental health came out in a way that affected your hygiene or affected the, you, that was not forgivable. And we did not give each other grace. Um, and, and she was adorable and she has a good heart and a good spirit. And I hope she's doing very well in life. 
um, and I will buy you a whole meal if you contact me because of the way I treated you in there over wearing your shoes in the cell. And she would just forget, honey. It wasn't because she was disrespecting I, I, you. Yeah, or she wasn't you being was ugly. Boss. <laughs> right. None of that. She wasn't like, I'm not doing that. No, she was like, she came in the cell. I said, honey, we don't wear our shoes in here ever. Okay. And then the next time she, she stepped in a little, I said, hey, we don't wear our sh-. every single time. Oh, I was just grabbing this. I don't care. I don't care if you're just stepping in to grab something off the desk and it's one step. You take that shoe off. That's how we lived our life in there. Yeah. We felt like it was important. We felt like it was in the end of the world if we didn't do it. And yeah, I ended up throwing her shower shoes out the window and some more stuff. God bless. Um, like the fish down the toilet. <laughs> really? Really? That is, why do you always bring up that fish? Because it makes me happy. That story makes me really happy. We're talking about shower shoes. Obviously, a lot of people thought about shower shoes. My wife sent a video clip. Uh, the Lion King, the infamous white boy B from the Dr. Lane Murray unit. Uh, this is her response to... Um, you have been in prison, so of course you still. I've been to prison, so of course I prefer shower shoes over tennis shoes. <laughs> and she does. She lives her little life wearing those shower shoes. Did y'all, could y'all wear your shower shoes to the day room? At- oh, girl, don't get me started with that madness, right? Like it was, it depended on who the warden was, who, who was what captain made rank and all this stuff because, oh, y'all need to go fully dressed into the day room wearing your tennis shoes. And then, oh, never mind, y'all can wear your t-shirt and shorts and your shower shoes. It was just constant back and forth about if we could wear those damn shower shoes into the day room. Same. It was constant back and forth with us also. Completely the same. Um, Yeah, I... (laughs) I wanted to, I was looking to make sure I didn't leave anybody out that called. And I remembered that my friend, Lisa Stevens, who went by Lee when we were incarcerated, she sent us, sent me a message saying she, now she did 29 years, 27 or 29 inside. And she said she only eats with plastic utensils and our friend, Laura Cummings, only eats with plastic utensils. Niala only eats with plastic utensils. And Niala, she she can bend a little if she's in someone's home. Laura, she's not putting a, a, a silverware metal utensil. It feels she can't eat and eat and enjoy her meal. Yeah, Niala's on here saying, me too, mom. Yeah. But Niala, at least if she's somewhere that doesn't have another option, she can make it work. You know, but Laura, it's not happening. Oh, and I know Laura. If something, if she said no, it's, I love that lady. She's, she's stubborn as a mule. Um, Let's transition from the shower shoes and the utensils to, I want everybody to be honest. And Donise is right about that. She said, you know, even though I've been to prison, I still I still find myself waking up at 12 a.m. and staying up the rest of the day. Girl, me too. Me too. I, I think I realized after I met with researchers one time about like they were talking about like they were doing very specific studies about, you know, different parts of the experience of incarceration. They were talking about sleep deprivation. And, you know, we were talking about the lights or whatever. And I realized... My sleep patterns, and I'm never fully asleep, Marcy. I'm never fully asleep. I am half awake all the time. And that is a habit from growing up in the system is that you just learn to be half awake all the time. Um, But no, what I was going to say is I want everybody to be honest here. How many of y'all still wash them panties in the shower? How many still do it? Because I barely stopped doing it. Marcy, I barely stopped. Gee, I people are not washing their, they're not washing their drawers. I don't, believe, that. I don't believe I was, I don't believe I was the only one that was still out here washing panties and hanging them 
on the shower run. Family, don't leave Toonchi hanging. If you wash your drawers in the shower, get in this chat right now and back her up because I really think that that's her own thing. Lisa says she doesn't wear her shoes uh, in the house at all. Jerry Swaim says, I won't eat anything that I ate in there. Hmm. Toonch. If I, 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 Donise just said, I think she's talking about panties. I don't think she's talking about shoes. Donise, correct me if I'm wrong. I just stopped doing that five, five months, months ago. ago. Well, she had 33 years in. And Lisa says, when she first got home, Lisa's got your back. And whoever's on Facebook in the Linus group says they wash their drawers in the shower. I told you, man. I think it's because, see, Donisa is talking about her panties. And so, Marcy, I think it was the, maybe you just didn't wash your panties on the ends. Did you not wash your panties? I just turned them inside out and <laughs> wore them. <laughs> <laughs> you took you put them in that laundry bag to take the laundry you nasty oh heck kid. no that was not happening my kiddo says she all her underclothes she still washes in the shower um and melissa ramey says any sign any the slightest sign of wear or tear They're they gone. go in the trash They're going straight in the and trash you get a brand new one and, and i'll tell you what guys in prison there was the state of your panties and everybody saw your panties all the time. Yep. Everybody mm -hmm. in that you lived with or worked with saw your panties all of the time. The state of your panties was a major reason for harassment. <laughs> right. It really I was. mean, bullying, meanness. You could have a raggedy bra because everybody knew how hard it was to get a good bra. But them draws, honey, now everybody will let you make it if you have a pair of period panties, right? Those are your panties that everybody knows you use those on your cycle. But if them draws, the little strings are hanging off, the little uh, the little the little rubber bands around it, and, and they're all stained up and duped up and all that, and they got holes in them. You better hide them while they're drying because we had to wash them by hand. That's what we're talking about. That's why some of us still washed them by hand uh, when we got home. You better put them somewhere in the dryer where nobody sees them because guess what? Somebody will come. Do you remember this? People would go, girl, come here. Go look at her drawers. Go look yeah. at them hanging off the end of her bed. You need to talk to her. Yeah. Do we need to get her another pair of panties or what? It just was a thing, Marcy. And so it was I like was the one who had to go talk to the people all the time. People, I just had a way of saying, I, I made it out to be the other people like, hey, listen, I don't want for the girls to give you a hard time. And this is going to be a real problem. Your panties are yellow. You got to start making sure you're rinsing the soap out because frankly it wasn't because they weren't washing them. It was because we had white cotton panties in the penitentiary. We only had three pair period. So you're hand washing them every day. They're, they're going to look rugged. <laughs> you're going to host squat in them. You're getting mud on them. All of that. I don't know why we were so fanatical about that. It reminds me of another habit that I have out here too, that I think people could testify to is that, I'm wearing white tennis shoes. I do have finally a pair of, of black tennis shoes that I will go walking in, but my tennis shoes are sparkling white, sparkling <laughs> white girl. And if they get dirty and I wash them and they can't get them out, I'm like Niala, it's going in the trash. Because having white, clean, brand new tennis shoes was a uh, thing. It was a thing. It was a status symbol. It was. It truly was. You had a pair that you you would wear to work and you would not wear your your church shoes <laughs> to work. So, yeah. And Jerry says, I have a washing machine now. I wear bright colors and throw them away when they get worn out. And I'll tell you what, we didn't throw our stuff away. Our T-shirt and shorts, when they got worn out, we washed them down to the bone. So they, they would thin, be, that thin, thin, yes, barely. Uh, the thinnest that you can imagine where sometimes you couldn't even sew, you would sew the holes 
but sometimes uh, you couldn't either. And someone who's who's watching from Linus says they clean their floor with the towel. Brittany and I clean all of the floors in my grandmother's house that has all of these floors, huge, huge ceramic tile, and we use a towel to clean the floors in the entire house. And it works better, and it's cleaner than a mop, frankly. So really our is. habits, our habits had sense to them, right? Like, because we understood how dirty the environment was and how important it was to keep things as sparkling clean as you possibly could. Lisa Stevens says thin was in talking about those clothes. And that's another status symbol. If you were in old school and had your set for a while, you had a couple of sets. You kept a brand new one on hand. That was your winter set. It was thicker, kept you warmer in the winter to sleep in. But those thin sets, that it was a status symbol. They, If they were bright white, super thin, yeah. And somebody else said um, one of the things that we had control of. I think all of these habits are boiled down to control. We have one of our fearless Linus members, big, really big active in the DFW chapter, April Towery. She responded, um, and I haven't even watched or listened to what she said, so I'm going to listen with you. I've been to prison. Of course, I crush up pork skins and put them on top of all my food, you know, for the crunch. <laughs> She's so cute anyways. I just, she probably, do you think she really crushes up pork skin still? Yeah. Yeah. Because some do of those you? food habits, I never ate pork skins, Marcy, because I don't really like the the fact that it is pieces of skin. It just freaked me out. But there are, again, there are things that I, I still eat, again, my ramen, but I, a very specific ramen with beans and cheese and ranch and mm, jalapenos. So good. It's so good. That, it's that, that my, I, I will put refried beans in my ramen sometimes. And sometimes I'll even, I had bought some dried refried beans for my videos and those were off the chain. God. When you put those dried refried beans in a ramen and if y'all haven't done it out here, do it. You're missing out. It. And well, and Jessica came in hot right now saying I almost made a soup pie yesterday. Yeah. Golly. Um, I wanted to look. If I can be fast enough, I'm going to look at the life after Crane. I noticed we got a really good response. I asked, asked that question in one of the Facebook groups, the life after Crane Facebook group. And so we have some comments. People says, of course, I know how to make it. Make what? Anything. Anything. We, we can fix and make anything. So thank you, Trina Sanders, for that. Jessica Lucky says, I've been to prison. Of course, I know toothpaste cleans white fabrics. That's true. Toothpaste Tooth is a great cleaning agent. Yes, yes. Paula Kay says, I wear my shower shoes in the shower. Cindy says, she still sleeps with a fan on and earplugs in. So for sure, Lori says, I don't like fluorescent lighting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Stacy says that inside every bag of ramen is a noodle burrito waiting to be born. <laughs> yes, Lord. Jerry Tucker says she hates closed toe shoes. She wears sandals all the time. So thank you everyone who answered and participated in our show. We appreciate you guys so much. Um, I want to finish with what, um, and I know we're getting close to time. Denise Cherry, hers was uh, a little, she's our good friend and Linus member. She spent 33 years inside and I was going to let her, her kind of close us out. Um, Tammy says, I still eat dry chili soups with pickle juice. That's so good. <laughs> yes. So oh, good. Thank y'all for hitting the like buttons. The, uh, thank you, Department of Corruption Stories, for reminding me to close out. You guys make sure and share this live. If you're listening wherever you hear your favorite podcasts, please do leave us a review. Thank you so much. Um, final words before before I let Denise. She's, she just talks about she's been to prison, so 
she kind of took a different turn with it. So I thought we would listen to her <laughs> and you haven't heard it. So you don't really have a choice. <laughs> I just realized that I muted it. Let me tell y'all what I did. Golly. I muted so that y'all could not hear me. Well, duh, I'm muting my microphone. I won't do that again. I apologize. <laughs> Hi, my name is Donise Cherry. I've been to prison, so of course now I understand the struggle that people go through when they are in prison. It's real hard to be away from your family, but... A lot of people experience those type of things when they go to prison. Sometimes it's hard. That's why I, I now, well, I have blocked my family out while I was locked up. Because without, with all of that on your mind, it's hard. And it makes your time hard. You have to block out everything that's going to distract you and make you feel like you're not a part of because you're away from the world. It's hard to be away from your family when you have guards that constantly use their job as a punishment where they can bully you to do anything they want you to do. They can lie on cases. So I now understand. Now that I'm out here in the world, I understand that I didn't have to take retaliation. I could have just given it to God. Isn't she wonderful? Yeah, I, and I love that she reminds us of the the powerful lessons that we learned on the inside. The the not just the quirky habits that we we you know we've been talking about, but the the good habits, the the things that we learn to to do to survive um, that we do carry out here, and realizing how much we can just give to God, our higher power, our faith. Um, so thank you, Denise, for closing it out with such wisdom. We will be live next week, 7 p.m., same time, same place. We are on the Rec Yard Women's Prison Podcast. See you next week. For hanging out with us on the Rec Yard Women's Prison Podcast with Marcy Marie 